Hi, this is the uh, first of three uh, 10 minute talks um, on the subject of black people and the British labor movement. Uh, the first one uh, is going to look at how black people have been involved um, and fought for a place within the labor, labor movement really and since it, since it began. The second um, will look at um, how they've been hindered by um, racism um, that they've come to face. And the third will look at the more at the current situation and how people have been involved up to and including the pandemic. Um, my name's Ken Olende. Uh, I'm uh, working at Brighton University um, doing research into black identity. Um, and I'm going to start by um, sharing my screen so that uh, you can see some images which hopefully will um, give an idea of some of the things I'm talking about. So I'm starting with an image of the Grunwick dispute from the mid 1970s, which was um, really significant for reasons I'll come back to, but um, because it was the dispute which made mainstream trade unions start taking immigrant workers and their disputes seriously. Um, I will come back to why I've called this section We Are the Lions, which relates to the Grunwick dispute directly. But I want to go back to look at um, right from the beginning of the labour movement, to see that black people have been involved all the way through. If you go back to 1768, uh, which was when the term strike was coined, um, this came because of a dispute amongst sailors about uh, wage cuts. Uh, this was in uh, North Shields. Um, and the issue um, led to the um, sailors striking the sails, that is uh, taking the sails of the ships down so that they couldn't put to sea. Um, and uh, the dispute was, I think interesting because in a way uh, the naval ships were the first big workplaces uh, that people uh, dealt with and I think they're worth mentioning here uh, because uh, the Navy and the Merchant Navy have long been places uh, where people from all over uh, the British Empire, which was rapidly at this point becoming the biggest empire in the world, uh, were employed. And as in this uh, picture, this is ever so slightly later from the um, 1820s, but it shows uh, a black sailor um, in, with um, other sailors. So it's quite likely that there would have been uh, black sailors involved in that first strike. And just to show that this is not a fanciful sort of idea, um, I want to go on to think about the world's first real trade union movement um, the, uh, and the first mass workers movement, which was uh, the Chartist movement, which developed in Britain in the 1830s and 40s. Um, and this was demanding uh, rights for workers. The People's Charter, which it was named after, was demanding various democratic rights uh, for working people. And I think it's an interesting thing that the first mass movement, its national leaders uh, were Irish immigrants. Um, in this case, uh, Fergus O'Connor and Bronto O'Brien, who are pictured here. But for our purposes, even more interesting is the fact that the leader in London uh, was a man called William Cuffey, um, who was the black son of a former slave and a tailor, um, who was loathed by uh, many of the rich. The Times newspaper um, attacked him quite a lot, and he was eventually transported um, to Australia. Um, but I think it's interesting that when uh, the largely white workers were confident, when they were looking to change things. They looked to people who were immigrants um, to, uh, to be involved in, the, in their leadership. And immigrants have been long involved in the development of trade unions. Uh, just to go on a slight diversion, uh, general unions in Britain uh, largely came out of mass strikes in the large, uh, late 19th century. And these were kicked off by a uh, strike by a group of people who were considered unorganizable. They were young immigrant Irish workers, almost all women uh, who were teenagers at the time, uh, but their strike led to um, unorganized people, unskilled laborers, it's called uh, being uh, unionized. Their strike in 1888 came a year before uh, the mass stock, stock strike that was really influenced by it and started uh, wider general trade unionism. So I think this is something uh, which is, an ongoing thing throughout labour history. 
But in terms of the experience of uh, non-white immigrants, most people in the late 19th century and early 20th century came from um, were either sailors or seafarers of some sort and the working class, black working class was largely um, in ports. Um, this was something that was exaggerated during the First World War when many of the merchant navy, um, the, no, the normal British merchant, merchant navy as it had been, um, were conscripted or joined the army, uh, sorry, joined the navy um, and um, so there were many positions open um, and people from across the empire, as it was known at the time, were recruited. They were often called Lascars, which was a generalized term by this point for non-white um, sailors. Um, and they uh, worked on convoys, they took risks uh, alongside other people. There was some resentment amongst um, white workers in that they were seen as having uh, accepting lower wages, but this was largely um, because of where they were recruited and many people in Britain could and did uh, join the trade union. Um, unfortunately, at the end of the war, um, when white workers came back, many looked to say that they wanted uh, these foreign workers moved out, even ones who lived um, in Britain and had become established. Um, and unfortunately, in uh, 1919, uh, there were race riots in a number of ports around Britain. Uh, this picture, which is from South Shields, uh, shows some uh, Yemeni seafarers who had been working on British ships uh, being arrested after having been attacked uh, by uh, returning British um, sailors. Why they were the ones being arrested is a question you might want to ask yourself. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's uh, the most shameful thing out of this is that the trade union at the time um, supported having white workers replace um, non-white workers, even when those non-white workers, as most many in the Northeast were, were members of the trade union um, and reported to the trade union uh, before uh, boarding ships. Um, I'm going to skip forward to uh, the Second World War. As people may know, many people came to serve from around the empire in the Second World War. For example, this is uh, Flight Sergeant James Hyde from Trinidad. Um, now, many of those people, once they'd worked um, in Britain, seen the wages and conditions in Britain, when they returned, as for instance many did to uh, the Caribbean, they saw that there were opportunities for work and then were interested in coming back. I mean, unfortunately for uh, Sergeant Hyde, uh, he was killed in action, but others came back um, looking for work in the years after uh, the Second World War. And this is where the Windrush generation comes from. You hear a lot about people being invited to come to work in Britain, but actually the Caribbean workers initially uh, came under under their own steam um, and saying that they would uh, come and work uh, and look, look, for, um, look for work in Britain. And I think that um, it's interesting that once people had arrived um, and um, were seen to be able to, uh, to work, you saw then that um, councils, companies, and the new National Health Service all moved together towards saying that they wanted um, they advertised in the Caribbean, in the Indian subcontinent, um, and around the empire, and incidentally in Ireland, where a lot of immigrants came from, um, for people uh, to come and work. And this is where you started seeing people traveling. Um, many of them um, then would, um, thinking perhaps that they might go home, but they became established and set up uh, communities. This is um, Brixton in uh, South London in 1961. These, established groups now started thinking of themselves as part of the um, wider working class and as such um, started struggling for more rights. They were unhappy about the fact that often they'd been employed at levels under their own skills um, and they wanted to get, get ahead. And another thing to say about um, <coughs> groups of workers like this is that they were often not employed at the level of <coughs> excuse me, of skills that they had had um, previously um, and that they were often not met um, with 
the welcome that they should have, which I shall talk about in the next talk more. But for instance, the local transport and general workers union branch in Bristol um, had said that it would have no, uh, in the Bristol bus company had said that it would have no black workers on the buses. Uh, and this, this was a thing they passed in 1955. In 1963, um, some black activists organized a bus boycott inspired by Martin Luther King and the activities in America, uh, which eventually with the support of local um, anti-racists and students uh, managed to um, get this decision reversed and got black people employed on the buses. But again, it showed that people had to actively move forward and demand uh, their rights there. Um, and you see this again and again. It is worth saying that many of the people coming to Britain uh, were not completely um, inexperienced in terms of trade unions. Uh, people, for instance, these are people from the Indian Workers Association, which was established um, in Britain, but had been uh, put together by people who had experience of trade unions in India and elsewhere. Uh, so people were prepared to organise and were able to organise and did organise, um, taking industrial action and so on, even when they were not supported by the uh, unions uh, that were already existing. So for instance, I'm moving forward again here to the 1970s. This is the Imperial Typewriters dispute in Leicester. Again, the Transport and General Workers Union uh, was a unionised work workplace, um, but uh, the um, Asian workers there felt that they were not being supported in terms of promotions, in terms of pay by um, the uh, white establishment of the local union, um, which when there was a strike uh, uh, led by Asian workers, the um, picket lines were visited and attacked by National Front people and it was it showed a real problems within the uh, within the union um though this was part of people coming to respect that um immigrant workers were not just coming to undermine them which uh, and undermine wages and conditions which was a thing uh, that uh, many workers had i think erroneously felt and this as i said at the beginning uh, came to a head in the Grunwick dispute, which was at a film processing plant um, in North London, uh, where um, a, almost all the workers were uh, women of um, Asian background. Um, one, the woman who became the strike leader, Jayabin Desai, um, was told by her manager uh, that people should stop chattering like monkeys. He meant speaking in their own language. She replied, what you are running here is not a factory, it's a zoo. There are many types of animals in a zoo. Some are monkeys who dance to your tune. Others are lions who can bite your head off. We are those lions, Mr. Manager. I have had enough. I want my freedom. And she started a strike um, that went on in eventually for two years and built up um, enormous support amongst the wider trade union movement. Uh, they got support from, um, and mass protests and um, outside the workplace um, from a number of different trade unions, um, from the TUC, from the NUM, the Miners Union uh, and others, and Dockers incidentally. Um, and you saw all these things, these protests coming up. And though the dispute uh, unfortunately lost in the end, uh, what you saw was um, a different attitude within the trade unions. Um, and this led to um, a shift which saw um, trade unions see become much more seen as being um, anti-racist um, and led to a situation where it was possible by uh, 1992 for the biggest union, the Transport and General Workers Union, which we heard before had several uh, dodgy moments in its past to elect uh, a black man, Bill Morris, as the first black um, trade union general secretary in Britain. Now, Bill Morris, when he was a young activist in 1964, had been told not to stand for a union position because the union wasn't ready for a black man. Uh, so this showed the kind of change round that was going on here. Now, I'm going to leave it there and uh, move on next time uh, to look at slightly different issues. Here are some useful uh, things that you might want to look at or read on these subjects that um, refer back to uh, some of the things I've been talking about. And um, as I mentioned, next time I will be looking at um, issues around racism amongst trade unionists and how, it, um, how it's hindered the movement. Okay, so thank you now.